Kalashnikov, perhaps the best known automatic weapon in the world. It is used in all theatres of war and is as popular with security forces as with insurgents, guerrilla warfare commanders and terrorists. Respected worldwide, the Kalashnikov is the standard weapon of the infantry in 82 different armies. It has also been discovered on this German freighter. The Israeli Navy seized the load on this freighter at the beginning of November 2009. Over 300 metric tons of armament material was found in boxes and containers, including anti-aircraft rockets and bazookas, ammunition and automatic weapons. They will most probably go to Hezbollah and Syria. The sender is assumed to be Iran. The international troops that are stationed in the Middle East to prevent such smuggling had not noticed the freighter. The biggest weapon exporters of the world are the USA, Russia and unexpectedly in third place, Germany. In 2009, President Obama, the new Nobel Peace Prize laureate, budgeted an unprecedented $534 billion for armament and the military, including the brand new F-35 stealth fighter jet. Not included in this sum is the funding for the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as for nuclear armament. Add it all together, and the USA is spending more on armament now than ever, since the Second World War. US generals still plan as if a war with the Soviet Union is imminent, say the peace researchers of Stockholm Sipri Institute. What we're seeing um, is, of course, in some regions with significant increases in terms of the volume of arms being imported. So off the top of my head, I would sort of cite uh, the Middle East as a particular region of concern. Also, we're seeing in Latin America, um, Africa and of course in parts of Asia too we're seeing uh, tensions and the influence of arms build-ups causing concern for, for different states in those regions. Um, the spectre of conventional war has not disappeared. Meanwhile German armament companies have become world leaders in weapon trading. They find their main buyers in Turkey, Greece and South Africa Leopard 2 tanks and submarines are big money spinners in these countries. And of course, many weapons are delivered to the Middle East, not least due to the situation in Afghanistan. The biggest supplier here is the USA. Almost 40% of its armament exports goes to this region. Well, with regard to Iran, we have as I mentioned, the, the issue of it being cited as one of the main causes for increased arms procurement in the region by the Gulf Cooperation Council states, that's the UA, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and others. And I think what you have there is a situation which has the potential for building up into a destabilizing arms race with Iran then citing that it, it has to react to the growing acquisitions of its neighbours and it feels threatened too, which in turn spurs on its neighbours to say that they feel threatened and we enter, a, I think, a potentially destabilising um, cycle of, that could lead to, to, to conflict. In the Far East, arms deals also run as if greased. Yet weapon imports into China have strongly depleted. The country produces more weapons itself and meanwhile, Beijing has become a weapon exporter. The American-Japanese military alliance has for decades determined the fate of the coast of China. Now that is over. With three and a half million soldiers, China has the world's biggest army. It is now seen by the USA and Japan as a military rival whom it is necessary to deter. China, um, if you look at the period before the 1990s, was effectively operating with a 1950s major conventional armed force. And what we've seen in recent years has been uh, a desire to sort of equip and modernize it to sort of equate, I guess, with China's growing status as a, as a major world power. Um, and so therefore, I think that the high levels of arms imports we've seen in recent years have been part of China's efforts to sort of demonstrate that it's a military as well as a major political, diplomatic and economic power in the world. Um, this, of course, though, as you mentioned, has repercussions for other states in the region. Um, and we see 
at the same time India, which is the second largest importer of major conventional weapons for recent years according to CIPRI data, um, also acquiring uh, significant quantities of major conventional weapons, also from Russia, which is also, has also been the major supplier um, for China. International weapon fairs are also being visited more and more often by prospective South American customers. Brazil recently sealed armament deal with France for 8.2 billion euros for weapon systems to protect the gigantic oil camps by the coast and the immense reserves in oil, natural gas and uranium in the Amazon basin. According to the calculations of CIPRI, South America invested about 24 billion euros in armament last year. This sum could, in one stroke, solve the social problems of this continent, in which almost one third of the people live in poverty. The biggest problem that we have in Latin America is, is not necessarily the weapons purchases themselves, but it's the atmosphere in which they're taking place. There's a very high level of mistrust, there's a very low level of transparency and accountability, and in that type of atmosphere, the types of major purchases that are being made can easily lead to miscalculation and misunderstanding. I think that's the, the issue which should be of primary concern for, for those in the region. New global negotiations on arms control are becoming increasingly necessary, not least in view of the huge arsenals in nuclear weapons. Yet so far, efforts towards control or even disarmament have had little success. Last year and this year, conventional wars. I can talk about Sri Lanka, I can talk about the conflict between Russia and Georgia, Israel um, in both Lebanon and also in, the, the, in Gaza, um, Sudan, Chad, Central African Republic. You see these conflicts all over the world with different weapon systems ranging from the, the Kalashnikov up to the advanced combat aircraft being used. Of course it remains a concern and of course there are regions in which this is more pressing than others perhaps, but our position is that, that the whole world should be responsible and take con uh, con into consideration these, these concerns as many of the equipment is supplied from countries in fairly stable regions, whether it be North America or Europe.